Listen, <laughs> I put a disclaimer out there before I go to jail. <laughs> I don't, I do not know what the police might do to your family. Good. Eric, you trust, your, you trust your friend? He tried to say he's not mud water, but he's some, he's something else you know. But nobody never knew he was. He's an investigative um, cyber thing. You understand? Five hours of confusion. Me and Alga involved. If I say I approach you, I am like me. Me, boy. No. When we get a contract, I realize the critic has no role in this company to pull. This company is owned by Winston. Over seventy percent. Derek. Over forty percent. Derek I think is the financier. The American guy who is also a good friend of uh, Winston. And he's So I don't know if it was an insult to Daggy. For some man, Daggy, you could smell bugger from a distance, right? But I don't know his war. I do know the kind of heated exchange we had in that boat room. One time I slammed down my hand and, and hurt my hand, you know, and told him that, you know, if you continue to go on national, you know, being, be, being a contractor for my project and go on your program and get custom people, call him people hungry belly and hungry belly dog and accuse him, you know, for African brothers and sisters, for all kinds of nonsense, you know. You know, as is the man, the man was eating out a styrofoam box and, and paper bag. He gave me, we eat with knife and fork when he used to, when they used to go out, you know. You understand? Like one time the guy called me for interview me and tell me, I said, Pan, I don't do low life and hungry belly. And it was on a life. He was, I didn't know he was on a life, but I, I, I just, um, remember low life and hungry belly is an attitude, is a mannerism. Um, I can't bring myself to that. Those who want to be in meetings with critic, you know, you know, now that they can see it as clear as day, you know, and I don't blame you. I think I went ahead. Without the approval of the other directors, and I went into this business with this man to build this war of and you know the only reason why I went into this business with him is because of the two engineers that he stole from Geico, you know? Well, you still didn't get your ticket? This flight takes off every single day. Tap that subscription button. Thanks. Hello, desktop. I control this live tonight because you friend critics could have getting heat stroke. I mean, hello. <laughs> How much you will on this life? Four point two. Hello. Yeah, listen to this here. Hero, hero, why are why are hero why are pay close attention to right? Pay close attention to the first. No, me say no the first. Oh, me. All right, you know. Me say no. Hello, stop that. Me say no the first person. Please play eight minutes vice vice note for me, please, Odessa. Hello, put your phone on 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 silent, cast me one out till this when this thing playing. Oh, hello is a secret, Odessa. Put it on silent. I just put hello. Put it on. Look now, again, Odessa. Me want nobody know this secret. This is but this why talking here tonight. Is between me, you, and the five nine two comment association. Me want a soul tell critics nothing here. I know if I'm going to come at this ocean, you can keep a secret. And you could keep a secret. That is easy. Yeah. Lady Vibe. Who the funny voice is not Melissa? Because you just sent it and I could never listen to the thing I try and forget. This is why I sent it. This is why I sent it to you at the last minute because me why I listen to nothing. Play the eight minutes there, please. Listen, <laughs> I put a disclaimer out there before I go to jail. <laughs> I don't. I do not know what the police might do to your family. Good. <laughs> Eric, you trust, your, you trust your friend? Um, I, I have two voices though. 
on this voice not there mm -hmm. it's something like shell mohammed to me hold on <laughs> who voice is that use a bright girl play again go back from the start and play no, again because i know he part but he said no he sung that's why i said i tell you i'll tackle this a big boy's friend go back from the starting and play it back this is Mohammed father play back my son down outside and chase them this is not me that i tell you them that one of six man all right play back the voice note now turn it up put but it to the white put it man nothing okay hello <laughs> drop the voice note people waiting how oh, you want me to talk a secret it's me and 5,000 of me talking this secret. You talking while well, Levi is not playing. Hold on, let me slow it down. Good. Those who want to be in meetings with critic, you know. You don't know that they can see it as clear as day, you know. And don't blame you. I think I went ahead. Without the approval of the other directors, and I went into this business with this man to build this world. And you know, the only reason why I went into this business with him is because of the two engineers that he stole from Beko, you know, and Vindra, and, um, and what's the name of the other guy, you know. Because I know these guys have had some experience to work on this big uh, wharf. And you know, we wanted something that can, you know, be over 100 tons, you know. However, it took long to bring the contract for us to formalize the contract. And so we went ahead with the project even before we signed a contract. After, um, Avenger and the other engineer guy, you know, submit the estimate. Now, when we get a contract, I realize the critic has no role in this company to buoy. This company is owned by Winston, who has 70%. Derek, who has 40%. Derek, I think, is the financier. American guy who is also a good friend of uh, Winston. And he sent Winston here to look over his interests. And Critic Tucson, who has 5-5%. Five, five so 70-20 and 5-5%. Five, five Critic is not a part of this company. Now this is a clear case of a con man. This is how con men operate. While whatever equipment he has in it is in his name, but if people are going to file litigation, they got to go to the company, most particularly the company secretary, who is Winston, you know. After I started the project, I realized that Winston, you know, Martin Dale, is actually the majority shareholders in the company. Now, this company doesn't have anything. This is a shell company, right? It doesn't own nothing. Other than the four directors, you know. A <laughs> couple of old equipment that found that is in his name. Yes, stop. What I stop it, stop it. So I'm going to collect back Pass this. It. You know, we just wrote. So. <laughs> Sorry. I had to laugh when Mr. Mohammed said they don't know nothing but the four people. <laughs> If you know, la break, hello. La break oh, it up, yeah. They own for the poor people. <laughs> yeah, the, the, master, the master, the only thing you know about the company is the four people in the company. No, they own the own, they all the own, the four people and some own machines. Hello. Wow. I love, Jeez. hello, I love mom with father here. Bring mom with father to the front of the fucking class. The master, the only thing, the company owns the four people. Critic. His son, Winston, and the other man own 40%. So this company is just a shell company. Critics in own nothing. The company in own nothing. You understand? And so this is what this man now explaining. This man went into business. I blame Mohammed for this. Mohammed Kai, Mohammed Kai, sorry, to the man. 
The man trick, trick, trick. The man trick mom with father. Anyways, nothing critics in own, nothing this company in own. You hear? Yes, Melissa, Mohammed father is a brilliant man. I've known him for years and I, I, I like him a lot. He's, he's the real master, gem. Melissa, I want to repeat what the man said. What the own? What the company own? Four people. Four. The <laughs> company own four people. Critics is so So this company own no machine. This company no own no that's some old machine, he said. And some old machine. This is what the company own. Continue playing the voice note, please. Put it close to the to your, to your, to your things I want. This people hell is a secret. It's just we alone. All oh, six thousand are we on this line? But I see there. Everybody gone way ahead with the project. It's just creeping grass, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's a big failure there. You know, I don't know who gives them contract again. You know. However, I you know we wrote this letter. And I told him that, well, you know, we got to terminate the contract. Um, the two engineer boys left him. I reached out to them. And they said, yes, they're going to come. They're working with another company, but they will come after hours. And, you know, speak to my contractor and supervise the completion of the wharf, right? But the wharf is only about 50% complete. You know, you've spent a lot of money. They're gonna be a huge cost to run because of this jackass, you know what I mean? You know? And I mean, I gotta blame myself. And right now, I'm in some really, real hot waters with the directors then. Because they're, 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 they're pissed, right? What are you gonna do? I took it upon myself. I gotta take my blows, you know? As on the other hand, you know, he was totally against it. You know that. He said he and this man is just hang out just for the fun of it. He and this man is not no friend. He helped him to build his studio because, you know, he had a old raw studio with two plastic chairs inside, you know. That was where he said he was doing his uh, show and his cost down and so on. And you know the kind of heated exchange we had in that old room. One time I slammed him down my hand and, and hurt my hand, you know, and told him that, you know, if you continue to go on national... You know, being be being a contractor for my project and go on your program and get custom people calling belly people hungry belly and hungry belly dog and accusing you know our African brothers and sisters for all kinds of nonsense. You know, I mean, you know, as is the man, the man was eating out a styrofoam box and, and paper bag. He give me we eat with knife and fork when he used to when they used to go out. You know, you understand. So today that man is such an ungrateful man. You know, I mean I don't know how to describe him, you know. He's a low grade human being, you know. You know. That man set up his studio so that he can carry important people in there, you know. And I'll have them in air condition environment. You know. You know, this is what kind of human being. He might care for me because he had a whole car, you know, and had air condition and so on. One thing, one girl, girl complained, a foreign girl complained, man, this car really, really hot, you know. This is the band, you know. Now he's going to put Winston in all these problems now. And Winston Martindale is a nice guy, you know. You know that, you know. He would have to stand all the litigation because I hear the man owe everybody, you know. He just go in on his program and talk about business. I told him, I said, you're not a businessman, you're a hustler. And hustlers don't make it in business, you know. A businessman is someone who plans and who strategizes, you know. You don't you don't go and do things, you know, you do things, you know, in a very systematic manner, you know. You don't jump around and do this and do that and do the other thing, you know. So, you know, I I really sorry, you know, I, I should have listened to you guys, but we have the, we, the, we got uh you know, down the road. You know, we have to correct, you know, whatever mistake and so on. We'll take them to court. We don't know what we can gain. I don't think there's anything to gain because the company ain't got nothing. But, you know, these are kind of some of the experiences that you will, you will have to go through in life. You know, a lot of unscrupulous people, a lot of grateful people, you know, a lot of people in this life, you know, I mean, you don't take the word, you know. I want to see how you're going to that one with government, the road project, you know, with all this money that he collects. And this 
this um, pump station over the river with, with the mobilization money that you already collected some way, I understand. Collected around thirty million dollars according to one of the guys, you know, who working with him to, you know. So I don't know not a piece, you know, a pipe is uh, at Bellevue they really has to build this thing, you know. So he already failed, you know, he finished with, you know. He lecturing the people who were business on his program, you know. This man is a real, you know, he calling people low life, you know, I mean, he's a low life, you know, no good. Anyway, bro, take care, you know, we can, we can talk, we can talk, we can discuss things further. We would have to decide, you know, we'll have to engage the lawyers and so on, and see how best we can move forward with this one thing, you know. Sorry, sorry, I caused all this, you know, harm, and I should have listened to you guys. Stop the one. Did you guys hear? Odessa? Critics is your friend. Representative friend. You know your friend could again he'd stroke the mind to drive around in a car with no AC. I think critics pick up the girl the girl say. Mom, it father cruel. <laughs> Hello, the man said, Mom, it had two plastic chairs in the studio. Mom, it Bailey studio. Only if he go in the studio and cuss out people and call them low life. He called them low life. I glad it's not. No, but, but it's not. But it's not. Here, though. Here, I just want to say this. I glad it's not. I call you low life and the real billionaire call you low life. <laughs> Oh God, I never. Well, I wake up to social media, Guyana's social media on fire. This whole weekend, we can get some great content because I got some fire videos lined up when it comes down to this whole uproar going on between Critic and T. Muhammad right now because T. Muhammad went and gave some information to Melly Mel and Melly Mel you know already got some vitriol for the critic because of just a number of situations that the two of them would have had in the past where he might have said things to her or said things about her on his platform that are not too nice or favorable from most persons perspective and as well she would have dragged him and said a lot of things about him that you know is not the most favorable on any type of situation if you think about it now this conversation has gone beyond a conversation it's now a thing that is creating a rift between t muhammad and the critic and the critic said he said nothing yet but he's about to expose everything so we gotta ask ourselves, what does the critic really know? What does he really have that he's about to expose on T. Muhammad? But anyways, this video right here, Melly Mel is exposing a lot about critic. She's putting the information out that a lot that we never hear before, or a lot that we didn't know the situation that was going on between him and the Muhammads. We thinking everything is good. We're thinking that, you know, people are flying on planes and everything is nice. Everything is, you know, nice and posh. Everybody's having a good time and living life. And to be honest with you, it's not a celebration. Ain't nothing to celebrate when you hear a person is down or a person is losing whatever it is that they would have invested in and the company is going under. That's not nothing to celebrate. But at the same time, these are two persons that got beef and got their own odds at each other right now. So they're going to go at each other in that way. But here at Delta 9 Media, we are neutral about this whole situation. I really don't have a side in this whole thing, to be honest with you. Now, critics say a lot of things about persons that is disrespectful. But you got to ask yourself, persons going to have their own perspective. 
and every person is going to have a lot of things that are hang-ups and things that hold them back and if they don't polish these rough edges that they have they can cause themselves to be uncomfortable to be in the company of others and that's what's going on right here and that's what the situation is that we heard about in the voice note is the things that critic was saying that caused he and a lot of persons to end up in beef so now we got to ask ourselves how calculative are you how observant are you of what's going on and are you truly really realizing that you have to now check out some other things when it comes down to scholarship because i know that you're a reader and i know that you're gonna see this video and when you see it i want you to check out this book called the 48 laws of power and law number one is don't outshine the ruler and you gotta analyze that a lot and not just that too we're doing right now with the voice note there's another law in the 48 laws of power which talks about repetition is everything guard it with your life so you want to watch and understand that type of scholarship and you want to now comprehend and watch the things them that you're doing and this is for mr critic because ultimately the situation could have been prevented if one would have controlled their mannerisms and chose better vernacular when expounding on a large platform like the one you have and that's the thing you got to show some type of respect for persons but ultimately respect come from both sides and i could really see that sometimes even meli mel is disrespect you so i could see sometimes when you come at her in a certain way but ultimately is the things that you say and the things that you do this situation is getting fiery and we got more content coming let's hear what mr critic had to say about this because critic give his own perspective on it you know critic give his perspective on it and it's interesting to hear his side because remember every person is an individual and none of us are perfect so we're gonna give his side an ear and let's hear directly what critic had to say about this and his side of the story why he made the comments that he made about mud water about doggy and Melly Mel and everything else that went on and we got some more content coming up stay tuned it's gonna be a hot weekend even though it's winter last night I wake up for Nakapi and I run through Facebook something I didn't normally uh, WhatsApp and there was a live going on um, a lot of you would have seen it. It, it for me it was basically distasteful and disgusting and it's strange coming from a man like me who stack out anything and and don't got limits mm. but that's not my style like one time the guy called me for interview me and tell me i said pan i don't do low life and hungry belly and it was on a life he was i didn't know he was on a life but I, I i just um remember low life and hungry belly is an attitude is a mannerism um I can't bring myself to that. So really and truly, if you try to categorize me and figure out where I am, I'm the intellectual that uses language loosely. If you look at me and how I carry myself, I don't the wrong liming got pad no, you understand? Oh, to the way things go. No, no, no. I care myself. There's, there's a lot of conflicting. You have to break it down for the layman to understand. There's a lot of conflicting ways about my persona. So, for instance, me don't mix a medal, but I pay respect to people. If I see a mawa you know and thing you do you like, hey what's up bro and thing i don't watch a tea with disdain and and you know like scarn because no i definitely open up i don't operate so yes eh? i give you respect with you to he yeah bro pong thing we ain't a lime we ain't a definite every day but respect you to you brother you understand so that's me style then 
No. I could talk to ministers and everybody, and then I could talk to the regular man on the street. But me and the regular man on the street, they're going to rap. If I ain't going to sit on any rum shop, I might go. But there's not a thing. Me looking for me, you drink rum weekend. Me looking for cover by your wedding. Oh, big talalay, duck curry. No, 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 no. I ain't got no disdain for you. <clears throat> but it's just where I am in life. So I'm looking. Somebody send this thing for me because Big Smith put an article on the page. Right? And I'm looking at how this thing spill over. It involves my wife now. It involves my child now. Kieran Bruce now had to go up on the live and represent. Not well, because when he done, people didn't know if he buggering. The whole thing in the comments is confusing. Some people believe is he. He trying to say he's not mud water, but he's some, he's something else you know. But nobody never knew he was. He's an investigative um, cyber thing. Yeah, sir. Five hours of confusion. Me and I get involved. If I say I approach you, I am like me. Me by is a whole anti man thing, dirty stinking thing. And here we are with them, they're there in a barrel and they get shit in the hand and they put in the hand outside the barrel and try for that for see what they can catch. Me by, let me tell you, by let me tell you. <laughs> If you not see them, then I mean they're not dead. Eh? Because the women I have had in my life only waited for me for tell them come represent. Can you speak for me? You understand? Let me tell you something. <laughs> You want me to tell you how much? How real is it? And how real the love is for me? How much more you know the tattoo that put a woman body? How much more you know that women tattoo on them on the body? Knowing all what is by doing and saying what Kira Bruce said and this thing, he left half of the people thinking he bogo. Another half feel is mud water. The one who don't know if he's mud water, half of that half confused. Now this is a life that they do mean talking nothing outside of what happened. I watch a piece, I end up fall to sleep. Because somebody tell me to call my name. Or suggested it was me, the guy with the, the wily hair. Right? Utisha was on there, end up saying how the place gets shoot up, he should have there, and I, I, I do not condone things. Here, Kieran Bruce suffer from mental illness. Hey, what is the problem with our society? Kieran Bruce suffer from past trauma. Hey, what is the problem with our society? If you go out and you walk and you bring in money, you buy a car and so, people think you're normal. All of us have our abnormalities. Now, me ain't no paragon of virtue. Certain things I have been unable to get right, period. That obviously has something to do with my programming, how I was brought up as a child, and my past experiences. I'm willing to accept that. But this game, the creation of a caricature, the hiding, the continuous lying, 
something is wrong mentally with the boy. He suggested that GT and T and the police got something going on. There are laws that has GT and T has to record everything that passed through the system and keep it for up to five years for specific reasons. When the police is investigating a matter, they can use that as evidence. Those why those laws, those, that is the reason why those laws were created. The funny thing is, as delusional as Kieran Bruce is, he is actually smarter than most Guyanese. So when people hear something or see something that is out of their realm or understanding, they know paying respects to you thinking, yo, you got no way of talking about. But what he has is delusions of grandeur. He's not the only one that is on social media that is delusional. And imagine in the head that this thing can happen and how it can happen just like that. Totally negating the circumstances around them. That people are moving, people are going to like, people are going to dislike. Funny enough, a lot of the world leaders, it is that delusion that takes you out of the matrix of what is going on, how the regular man is willing to think, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. So somebody saying his wife said he take burger. I, I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about that. On his video, in trying to explain the team bogo. He asks the moderator for the program that they went out the time and if the man is smell bogo boy. <laughs> you understand? It's like if you, you just walk with your BT, all your smell bugger upon people. You understand the, the lunacy? I am telling you about a live video. Kieran Bruce asking the moderator for the, the interview. After Otisha come on the program, he come up on the program with Otisha, calling Otisha mother, giving respect to Otisha, having an understanding of the Anti-Man Association and how it works. Accept that you know I didn't know. I don't know. I know Otisha. I've seen Otisha. Otisha put some costs for me for Kieran Bruce. That's how the whole story starts. Right? But I don't know Otisha like that. Only Otisha can't say she know me like that. We had with differences. I cost Otisha. Otisha cost me what what thing. He come out with a mother accepting that he understands the dynamics of how the anti-man society works. Then go on to ask if when he immediately banned at the time that he's doing the video shoot, if he smell bug upon he. <laughs> I don't know if it was an insult to Doggy because Dog always smelling Dog BT. So I don't know if it was an insult to Daggy. For some man, Daggy, you could smell bugger from a distance, right? But I don't know his war. And other people keep calling in and they just facilitate this this disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I fall to sleep, buddy. Now I listen after. I didn't listen to live. I didn't know. I went sleeping. I wake up. There's a live and Daggy was down at the end talking something. I go back now after somebody messaged me and said, say, you try to make advances. This is the problem I got with the bike. No, me and I, I have never been 
in them circles. Never been wrong, never like he said, he got no fatty, my friends. I know a lot of gay people, a lot of gay people might follow me and so I don't have not one auntie, my friend. I can't say Angel would hear me up. Angel, see, I tried to bring Angel for man cave. I said, man, this is fucking man cave. I ain't there, no. Mr. Infused Agave, the most nutritious replacement for sugar. 